This is the exact method that we're using to create our six figure and seven figure drop shipping Shopify store designs. And I've just created an example one for you guys. And you can see how beautiful this looks with the thumbnail for the YouTube video on the website. You got the drop down menus right there to give people more information without having it all bulky on your website. Then you got the side by side images going over more details of the product. And then you got the foot. And if we keep scrolling back up, you can see how beautiful this website looks. And I'm going to be teaching you exactly how to do this in this video. Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel. My name is Camille Sarno and is the Ecom King. And in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you step by step on how you can create a one product store that looks really branded and professional and that converts extremely well in 2022 and 2023. This tutorial is going to be around about 30 to 50 minutes long. I'm not joking. It's going to be step by step so you can carry and follow along with your laptop or your computer if you want to create a Shopify store that looks like mine. Now, I'm also going to be giving you guys copy and paste templates that you can use on your store for things like privacy policy, terms and condition, and shipping and delivery. And as soon as we hit 2,000 likes, I'll leave it in the pinned comment and in the description below. So if you've been somebody wondering how to design a Shopify store that's going to convert really well and look really appealing, then I'm going to give you the exact formula right now that will work with every product that you choose. And you can also convert this into a niche store if you want to. And this has been proven to work for me for the last 12 months because I'm using it right now in some of my six figure and seven figure stores. So before we can start creating our one product Shopify dropshipping store, we need to have a product in mind that comes with good photography and good information to make our life easier and to give us the best quality store. Now, if you haven't already got a product in mind, you can use a website like pigster.com and head over to the winner section. And this is going to show you loads of winning products in different industries, different niches. And it's also going to give you all the relevant information about these products. So for example, let's say I like this product, I'd click details and then it would show me everything about the product. Now, this is going to be my product choice in the video so this is the product that i'm going to be using to design the website about it's called the cordless air duster and you can see it's going to give me the description and i can use this for my website it's going to give me the aliexpress link the alibaba link the amazon link and later in this video you're going to understand why it's important to have the amazon link the aliexpress link the alibaba link also other stores selling it so you can see how they've designed their store and take good things from their store and repurpose it for your store but if you haven't already got a product or you haven't got good information then i'd recommend you use peaks there to help you get that so once you've got your product in mind you want to head over to the aliexpress link for your product you can see this is my product it's got a thousand orders 4.8 star reviews you only want to be going with a product that has got good reviews and has got good photography because if you scroll down you can see this is the photography that's going to come with my product because this is the imagery that i'm going to be using on my website so if it's not good photography or if it's not good imagery or they don't have good videos then it's going to make your website look bad a great extra bonus is if your supplier can give you a video of the products you can see here I've also got a video of my product. And the reason why is because you're going to be using this video on your website after you've edited it to be suitable for your landing page. Now, once you've done that, you want to download a Chrome extension called Ali Save, and that will give you the option to actually download all the images by clicking this little icon once you've downloaded the Chrome extension. And it will also give you the option to download the video if you've got the pro version for $1 and I'm not sponsored by them at all. And for the images, when you scroll down on the listing, you will either have to contact the supplier and ask them to send you them or you'll just have to print screen them because you can't actually right click these images and save them and some of the images in the listing below is actually better than the main images in the actual product info now once you've done that step you want to head over to this link here which is my exclusive shopify 14 day free trial link and by using this link you'll get 14 days for free and sometimes you can actually get even more than 14 days for free it just depends when you use the link now once you've set up your shopify account and you started your 14 day free trial your screen should now look like mine and you want to head over to the bottom here where it says apps and you want to click on it and then it should open up this page now once you've done that you want to go to where it says recommended apps and then it should pop up this page and then you want to go to at the bottom where it says shopify app store and you want to click that link once you're on the shopify app store search bar you want to search for these two apps the first one's going to be called auto ds now what auto ds lets you do is it lets you import the product through aliexpress and loads of different other websites like cj dropshipping and loads of other 
other ones. And it will also automatically fulfill every single order for you once you get orders on your website. Now, an alternative to this used to be Oberlo. That was the really common one, but they shut down. Now, another alternative to AutoDS is actually DSs. Now, I think AutoDS is better than DSs because it actually gives you the automatic fulfillment option and loads more features. The only downside to AutoDS is it does have a 30-day free trial. And once that's done, it will then be a paid subscription. Now, if you do not want to do that, then you should use DSs because it is free forever as long as you're on the lowest tier. Now, once you've downloaded the AutoDS app, you want to head back over to the AliExpress link for your product like here. And it should say somewhere around here, import through AutoDS. Mine's not saying it because I've already done it, but you want to click that gray button and it will import it into your website. Now, once you've done that, you want to head into the Auto DS app by going back into Shopify, clicking apps, then Auto DS, and you want to go to where it says drafts. And where it says drafts, it should show you the product that you've just imported. And you want to you want to click the import button. After a few minutes, it should show the product in the product section here as a live product on your website. Now, the best way to double check that this has actually worked is by going to where it says products in the Shopify dashboard and making sure the product shows up under active. Now, as long as your product shows up here, then it has worked. So now we've got all that out of the way, we can move on to the fun part of this video, which is creating the Shopify store right now. So you want to head over to the Shopify dashboard, go to where it says online store, and then it should take you to a section that looks like this. And it should have the dawn theme as the current theme. Then you want to scroll down to where it says popular free themes. And you want to go to where it says the refresh theme, this one right here. And you want to click the add button. After a few minutes after you've done that, it should now show it under the theme library as just added. Then you want to hit publish. So right next to it, you want to hit the publish icon and then click publish again. And that will make it the current theme on your store. Now, if you take a look at the same page again, it should now actually show the refresh theme as the current theme as the main preview. And now you want to click the green customize button. After you've clicked that customize button, it should take you into the theme editor that looks just like my screen right here. Now, don't get overwhelmed if there's lots of things going on. I'm I'm going to be showing you exactly how to manage this and how to actually customize the store right now. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get rid of a few sections that we don't actually need on this store. So if you head over to the left hand section here, it should show you the announcement bar, the head of the slideshow. This is what we need to go on to now. Now, once you've gone to this section, you want to scroll down slightly and you want to see where it says slideshow. And under slideshow, you're going to have three slideshow. You want to unmark two of them. So where it shows the eye icon, you want to click it once and you want to click it twice. So on two of the slideshows out of the three, they should be on eyed, meaning that they won't be a slideshow. We're turning the slideshow from being a slideshow into a normal website banner because we don't want it to be a slideshow. Now, if you do want it to be a slideshow, then you can unmark these and make them a slideshow, but I don't personally do that myself. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go to where it says featured collection. And if you've got a niche store, then you might want this section. But as I'm doing a one product store, I do not want this. So I'm going to click the eye icon again to get rid of it. And then where it says multi column I'm also going to want to click that one too because I don't need it and then it should show image with text you want to keep that now you want to keep scrolling down and then you should see something called here featured collection so if you scroll all the way down here on the left bar you should see something called featured collection again if you've got a niche store you might want to keep this but me personally I'm going to get rid of it so you want to go into where it says featured collection where it says rich text and I also unmark this one you can actually keep this one if you want to and go over even more benefits, but I personally don't. Now, once you've unmarked rich text, you want to scroll down to where it says multi column and you want to unmark that one too. And then you want to scroll down again and it should say blog post. You want to also unmark this one. Now you can actually keep the blog post if you're going to build the store long term as a brand, but for now, I'm going to keep it turned off. Now, once you've done all that, you want to hit the save button in the top right, because if you don't, it will not save it. And if you don't save it and something happens, you have to redo everything again again. So make sure that once you've done a few amount of steps, you keep saving just to stay on the safe side. So once you've done that, guys, we're going to then move on to the color scheme of our website. So you want to go to the bottom left section where it says theme settings. You want to head over to the right section where it says colors, and then it should show you all the colors of your website. Now, to be able to pick the color for your website, you need to head over back to the AliExpress list for your product because you're going to be using the color of your product for your website. So you can see here, there's an image of my product. I'm going to scroll down there to get you a better image. Now, this image here shows my product. It's black, it's white, and it's purple. So they're the colors that I'm going to be using for my website to make it feel like a real brand. So again, just use the colors from your product. Now, if, you, if your product is a multi-color product, then just use the main simple colors. You don't want to go too crazy with the colors. So what I'm going to be doing next is I'm going to be using a Chrome extension called Color Picker, and I'll leave a 
link to it in the description it is completely free i'm going to click on it i'm going to click pick color from page and then i can highlight the color from this so you can see i've highlighted it and now it's going to show me the color of what that was so then i can go back to the chrome extension click color picker and then copy the color code to make it on my website once you've done that guys make sure you go back to the color picker history copy that color code right there next to the hashtag click ok and then where it says accents number one you want to make that the purple color or whatever color yours was by replacing the code click done and then it should replace it to that color now once you've done that you want to go back down to again where it says accent two you want to make it the same thing and then where it says text side colors or secondary colors you want to make these like a dark gray or like a black so i'm going to scroll all the way around to like a dark gray almost a black so you guys want to make sure yours is very similar to mine or you can make it black but i like to keep mine like a gray black because i think it looks better so do the exact same for the second one so guys just to clarify that again your accent one should be the main color for my instance it's purple accent two should also be the main color text should be like a dark gray blacky color and then outline button should be the color of the main color again mine's purple so guys the next thing that we need to do is we need to edit the announcement bar so if you click announcement bar on the top left it's going to show you how to customize it by clicking on it now if you click on it it should now say welcome to our store accent number one now once you've done that you want to change where it says welcome to our store and you want to change it to say free track shipping on all orders so you guys can see i've just changed mine and it says free track shipping on all orders now you can do more than this you can add like 30 percent off for the rest of the day or something like that but this is the one that i have on most of my stores i keep it the exact same unless it's something like a holiday season now once you've done that you want to head over to the slideshow section by clicking on it and then clicking it again by clicking right click on this icon and then it should highlight it in blue and then once you've done that you're going to see where it says cover image change image and then it's also going to give you the name for the slideshow so you can see here this right here is going to change where it's a slideshow and then you can change the size of it as well now this bit can get a little bit tricky because it depends on how you want to design yours now for example with mine i like to do this in canva so i actually like to design this section on my website in canva now you can do it through shopify by just uploading an image and then changing the text but me personally i feel like it doesn't look the best for everything that i try and sell so i'm going to give you guys both options i'm going to be showing you how to do both options right now so let's say you want to do option one which is just use Shopify you're gonna to go to where it says change image you're gonna to go to where it says select image and this is where you're going to want to upload an image of your product so you guys can see I've just selected this image here but you can see it makes it go really big and it makes it go really blurry and it makes it look horrible and that's why I don't like doing this method and now if you change it to the mobile view by clicking the computer icon you can see what it look like on mobile and you can see on mobile it doesn't look too bad and mobile is more important than desktop so on mobile this isn't a bad strategy if we go back to the desktop we can start changing it now let's say you want to use this strategy you want to go to where it says heading slideshow and you want to change the heading to the name of your product so whatever the name of your product is you want to come up with a really fancy name for this product so i'm going to be calling mine air dust cordless cleaner so i'm just calling it the name of the product and what the product does in a short sentence so you can see i've changed mine to say the air dust cordless cleaner then you want to go to where it says medium heading size so you can change it to be a medium small or large i'll keep mine on medium and then you can go to where it says subheading and where it says subheading this is where you actually want to add basically why your product is great so i might put something like the best tool to keep electronics clean although it's an air dust cleaner it's designed to keep your electronical products away from dust that can damage them over the long term so i'm going to keep it short and sweet and just call it the best tool to keep your electronics clean so once you guys have done that it should now look like this and then you want to go to where it says button label and i like to make mine say buy now instead of shop now you can either do learn more or buy now or shop now but i find that buy now is the best one then once you've done that you want to go to where it says button link and you want to change it to where it says products and then you want to choose your product now i know you've not changed the product page yet but we can do that later and it'll automatically update it anyway so you just want to select your product and once you've done that the actual buy now icon should go from gray to black to tell you that it's actually listed and you can also use an outline button style as well so you can choose which one you like i like to do mine like this and then you can also change the position of where this content is positioned so you can change it from middle left to middle center I like mine on middle left personally, so I just leave it there. Then you can also change the color scheme by changing it from background two to background one to accent one. Now I do leave mine to background two in this method. And you can also change the way it looks on mobile. So if you head back over to mobile, you can actually change the arrangements. If we scroll back up, you see where it says mobile left, we can do from mobile center. And then it'll change this from being in the left 
to being in the center. Now, I leave mine always on the left-hand side. So if you're in the mobile section, this is how yours is going to look. It doesn't look too bad, but I do prefer the other method that I'm gonna be showing you in the next few minutes. Now, if we change the color style from background two to accent two, you're gonna see where the change is done. So it changes it from being a white background to a purple background. If we do accent one, it's gonna change it to probably a gray or black background. I think that's background two, I think. So you can see it changes them. So it'll either be gray, white or black. So I leave mine as background too, guys. I think that looks the most professional. Now, if we head back into the desktop version, I'm gonna show you how to do the second method for this slideshow strip, the home strip, which will look a lot better. You wanna make sure that you write this down into a note or a spreadsheet because we're gonna use this content here on the next section in Canva. What you do wanna do is you do wanna delete this, guys. So you just wanna delete all the words out of here if you're using the other section, but you do wanna copy it into a Word document because you are going to be using it again. If you wanna upload your images now, I'd recommend you do so. So go back to where it says image, go to where it says change, go to where it says upload image or change image, and just make things faster by uploading all your images. So I've just uploaded some of my images now to save me a little bit of time. So what I need you guys to do is sign up to Canva Pro using my link in the description because you will get a 30 day free trial so you can use the features that you need to use and then delete your subscription. So once you've got your 30 day free pro account, you wanna go to the search bar and type in website banner and click search. And then you wanna select this one here on the left hand side and you just wanna click on it. Now, once you're inside of the editor, you just wanna delete everything on the screen. So you just wanna delete all this text, all of this writing. And the reason why you're doing it is because you're only using it as the actual canvas and as actual size, because this is the right size for your website, and that's all you're using it for, the dimensions. Now, once you've done that, you wanna head over to where it says uploads in the left-hand section, and you wanna upload a image of your product. So once you've uploaded an image of your product, it's probably best to use an image that shows the product in high definition, just on a standstill like this. So it's just showing the product in high definition. Once you've done that, you wanna right click it and go to where it says edit image. And then you wanna to go to where it says background remover. And that's where you need the pro feature to be able to do this. Now, once you've done background remover, it should have got rid of majority of the background. Now, I only wanna keep the air dust gun in this image. So that if it doesn't get rid of everything that you need, go to where it says erase, and then it will give you the erase tool. Now, I make the brush size quite big. So I'm gonna get rid of this because I don't need it in this image. And then I'm also gonna get rid of this right in here. So I'm gonna get rid of this section. I'm gonna make the brush slightly smaller because it's gonna be too hard to do it. And you can see it's now left it like this. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna make the image slightly bigger. So around about this size, and then I want it to be like, uh, I'd probably say something around the lines of what I've got here. So once I've done that, I'm happy with the way that looks. That I'm really happy with. Now, what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna go to where it says text. And once you click text, drag this text across. And what you put in the banner, so what you put into this heading and subheading, you're now gonna put here. So I'm gonna put air dust quarters cleaner right here. So guys, once you've done that, you can see I've added air dust quarters cleaner and I've also added the best tool to keep your electronics clean. Like I said before, I'm just copying what I did originally on the Shopify store and I'm just putting it in here. Now, when you do this, guys, make sure you're using the right font. So if you don't know what fonts to use, go into Shopify, go back to theme settings, go to where it says typography and you can use the same fonts in here in Canva. You wanna make sure it's all congruent. So make sure you're using the right fonts. So once you've done that, guys, I know my fonts are not accurate, but this is just to speed things up in this process, but yours should be accurate. You wanna leave a little bit of room for your buy now button because your buy now button will be done on Shopify, but it should appear somewhere around here. Now, once you've done that, you wanna go to where it says elements and you wanna grab one of these shapes. I like to use a square icon. I like to rotate it. I just like to give this a little bit of color by rotating it making it slightly bigger, rotating it a little bit more to give it a little bit of an edge, a little bit of edges to it, and then I can change the color to my purple. Again, you wanna basically color copy the same color and make sure you're using the same color. Now I've done this to speed things up so mine's not actually the right color. I've done this in the other edge right here. So just by doing that, it just adds a little bit of color and it breaks up a little bit of this white. Now something else that you need to do that is extremely important is you need to be using the right background color. Now this white color you do not want to use. So I'm gonna give you the color code that you need right now. So the color code that you're going to need is EFF. 0F5, that is the color code, as you guys can see on the screen. This is the right one that you're going to need for your website by clicking color, paste that in, 
and it should show it and then you want to change it to that color i know it's like a little bit of an off gray color but that's the color you need for your website now once you've done that guys you want to head over to where it says share then you want to hit download and you want to download this image so once you've done that guys you want to head back over to shopify go to where it says slide image upload the image you just created in canva and you are gonna to have to make a few changes to make this look right so you can see this is how mine's currently looking it looks completely fine now if you're not happy with the way yours looks then just rechange it into canva again and then re-upload it i'm happy with mine and then where it says heading size you don't need to worry about this but where it does say where it says desktop content position, I have mine on bottom left. And then where it says show container on desktop, you also need to turn this off for this to work correctly. And then where it says desktop content alignment, I also have that on left. And where it says image overlay opacity, I have that on zero. It will naturally be on 10% or slightly more. And then where it says color scheme, this is where you're going to want to change this now because the buy now button is on white and it kind of blends blends in with the color of the image. I might now want to change this to inverse or accent number two. So guys, once you've done that, you just want to check to see if you like it in the mobile version. And as soon as you've done that, it might take a few goes for you guys to get this to look the way you want it to look. But just do bear in mind, you do have to play around with this section to make it look nice. So if you scroll down, you should see now these images with text and you should have in total four different images with text. Now, I personally only use three of them, but you can use four if you want to use four. These are just going to be the main features that we're going to talk about so i'm going to go to where it says image with text and i'm going to currently hide one of them because i only need three out of the four but if you want to keep four you go ahead and keep four so once you've done that you want to click on the first one by just clicking on it and you want to upload the first image now the image that you want to upload should be an image correlated to what specification you're talking about or what highlight you're talking about when it comes to the actual product so once you've uploaded your first image here you're going to be able to see loads of different settings like like image height adapter image i keep mine on an adapter image desktop image width i keep it all the same so all of these little sections here i do not touch now if you want to go ahead and change a few things in here that's up to you but i do keep them the basic ones that are already at first thing you want to do after that is go to where it says image with text and change this to the heading of the feature you want to talk about so i'm going to change mine to insane power because the product has got insane power once you've changed it to the feature you want to go underneath it and this is where you're going to give a brief overview of why you're saying that that feature currently exists now a thing that i like to personally do myself is i like to head over to amazon and i like to try and find my product from aliexpress which nine times out of ten nine point nine times out of ten you're going to find the exact same product on amazon and you're going to find the top seller of your product so i've got a few of them open here and you're going to want to look at their description now because in their description they're going to actually have all the features in their description like this you can see if we go to see more details every single thing that i'm going to want to know is in this description right here so you can see here it talks about the power right here in this section so what i'm going to want to do is i'm going to want to copy this to around about this section right here and i'm just going to click copy go back to my shopify store and then put it into this section here so you can see that i've pasted that in and it's currently talking about how the power works now at the start it's actually going over their name of the product so i'm going to want to get rid of that so every time you use this strategy make sure you check the wording because they might mention their name of the product instead of yours so you can see now it actually reads it correctly and it talks about the power of my product now once you've done that you want to head over to where it says the shop now button and you're going to want to change this to buy now instead of so buy now and then you're going to change the link to your product link by going to products go into the product name and then once you've done that your button's now changed to black to say it's currently working once you've done that one guys scroll down to the next one and the next feature that i'm going to be talking about is long battery life because it has got a big battery so you can see here i've added long battery life i'm going to head back over to amazon and see if he's got something talking about battery life and guess what he has here he's talking about the size of the battery and why it's so powerful so i'm going to copy to where it makes sense to copy to so i would probably say around about this section here is good enough make sure you read this guys to make sure it is talking about the right thing and then i'm going to paste this right here so you can see here it's going over exactly what the bullet point is in the heading right there and now i'm going to select the image talking about the actual battery life and the one talking about the battery life is this one right here talking about how you get 60 minutes out of the battery you can, so you can see this image is talking about the same facts in this description 15,000, 15,000, 60 minutes 60 minutes so make sure everything makes sense don't use an image that doesn't make sense because people will not buy your product because they think that it's a little bit suspicious that you're not having the right information on your website so make sure everything aligns up once you've done that just to save time i'm not going to do it this time make sure you change it from shop now to buy now 
use the product page link. So you can see here I've written lightweight and portable. Now something that I did forget to mention is I do actually like to change these to medium size. So where it says heading size, change them to medium because it does look a lot better on mobile and desktop if you change them to medium. I do apologize about not mentioning that. Now it is down to everyone's personal preference, what they like to do, do they like to have it as that or not. So now I've done that, I'm gonna go back to Amazon and try and see if they talk about it being lightweight and portable. And from what I've just read here, this doesn't mention it. So I'm gonna to go to another Amazon seller and see if they talk about it being lightweight and portable. Nothing here talks about it being lightweight and portable. So then I'm gonna look at another Amazon seller to see if I can find them talking about it being lightweight and portable. So you can see that sometimes you have to do this guys to try and find the right information. So after going through around about five to six different Amazon sellers, I was able to find the information that I was looking for in terms of the weight and in terms of the design. And I was able to find it. You can see here, this handy design allows for comfortable usage as it's only 475 grams. That's all I need. And again, that section's done. I just need to change the shop now button to buy now and change the link to the product link. So once you guys have done that, make sure you save that section so you don't lose it. So once you've done that guys, scroll down to where it says subscribe to our emails and click on it and you want to change it from accent 2 to background 2. And then once you've done that, you want to change the bottom padding because you can see here they kind of overlap and it doesn't look very nice. So change this to around about 12% and you can see it gives it a nice little gap now which makes it look a lot nicer. If you want to change that to a little bit more like 16, you can do so or let's say 20%. You can see that looks a lot nicer. And you do want to change what it says here. So you want to get rid of this little bio. So where it says subheading, you do want to get rid of that. And you want to change where it subscribes to our emails to where it says sign up to our newsletter for 10% off your first order. So as you guys can see, I've changed mine now to say sign up to our newsletter for 10% off your first order to help you get more emails. And you want to change the heading size to medium to small as you've changed it from being a subheading to a main heading. And now that looks a lot nicer. I'm going to go to where it says footer and you wanna change the color of the footer to accent number two. Now we're gonna come back to the footer a little bit later on once we've created our logo and we've created our actual pages like our terms of service. So for now we can leave this section as it is. Now we do need to add two more sections to this homepage. The first one is gonna be a featured product and how you're gonna do that is by going to the left-hand section, go to where it says add section here. You should be able to see a plus logo plus add section and then you wanna do product, featured product. So you can see here, featured product. You wanna add that. And now you wanna add that featured product above the newsletter or the email newsletter. So it should now be in this section. So above the newsletter, and below the last feature, it should there have it. Now, once you've done that, you wanna to go to where it says select a product, and now you wanna select your product, which is this one, and then you wanna hit select. And now it should show your product in this section. Now, I do know that this isn't gonna be accurate. I know it's gonna come up with a crazy product name and all things like that, but till we change the product page, this won't change. We can change a few things now, but the main part of it will not be changed till we change the product page. Now, the first thing you do wanna do though is you wanna delete this section here where it says your brand names, so your brand name will appear here. You want to delete that because you don't need it. And you can see it should disappear in the next few moments and it's gone. Now, once you've done that, you just want to hit save. So the next thing that you guys want to do is add another section to the home page, And this is going to be above the featured product. And you're going to want to go to where it says add section. And you're going to have all the different options. Click show more. And you're going to want to do a video. So where it says video, this is what you're going to want to click. So you want to add that video above your featured product and below the last feature that you made on the side by side features. So once you've added the video here in the right section, you want to get rid of the heading and you want to change the color scheme from background two to accent two. Now, don't worry about this video section. We're going to come onto this later on in the tutorial, but we are going to upload a video here so people can watch the product in action. So it gives them more information. So it gives them a higher reason to buy the product. So the next thing that I want you guys to do is scroll all the way back up to the left-hand section where it says header. And then where it says header, I want you guys to change the custom logo size to the highest amount, which is 250. Now this won't work till we actually add the logo. You're also going to want to change the color of the header from color inverse to background two. Now, once you change it to background two, your header should now be a white color. Now this will make sense once we make the logo and you can take a look briefly at how the website's currently looking and it is starting to really pick up shape and look really nice. Now, once you've done that guys, make sure you hit the save button. We're going to come back to the header and add the logo a little bit later. The next thing that I want you guys to do is go to the top section where it says home page and change it from home page to default product. Now, by doing that, it should now take you to the product page. This is the page that people are gonna buy your product from. So you can see here, this is what it currently looks like, and we're gonna make the changes right now. So the first thing you need to do is 
open up another Shopify dashboard tab and go to where it says products, click your product, and it should take you into the product editor like mine right here. So the first thing we wanna do once we're in the product editor section is we wanna change the title name because the ordinary one is not very good. Do you wanna change it to the name of your brand or the name of your brand that you're thinking of? So I might wanna change mine to Air Dust and then the TM logo. So I like to add the TM logo. So if you know what the TM logo is, go to this website right here. You wanna get this little TM logo and add it on the end of the name. So this is the name. And then after this, put what the product does. So I might do something like electronical cleaner or dust cleaner or keyboard cleaner. So how this works is you're calling it the brand name. So I'm calling mine Air Dust TM and then what the product does in a very short word, which is clean your electronics. So air dust cleans your electronics. You know what the product does and it sounds really cool. You don't wanna call it anything basic because that's boring. You wanna give it a high perceived value name that people are thinking, wow, that sounds really cool. So where it says description, guys, make sure you delete everything in this section. There's probably gonna be loads of writing in there. Don't worry, just delete every single thing in that section. Now, what you're going to be writing in this section is a three liner explaining what you're product does and what the benefits are in a very short paragraph because in the drop down menus that's where you're going to be going over all the features and that's where you can start to write bigger paragraphs so what i've written in mind is keep your computer keyboard camera and much more dust free with our cordless electric air dust it is powerful portable and reusable so you'll never have to buy a can of compressed air again in this description if we break it down keep your computers clean so i'm talking about what this does so it's going over what products this will help with computers keyboards cameras and then the main problem which is the dust and then i'm going over why our product's so good because it's cordless and it's electronic and it's a dust cleaner and then it says you won't ever have to buy compressed air again because people normally buy compressed air to do the job this product does so that's how you want to structure yours again just a simple three liner and then you want to make sure this is in paragraph formation then once you've done that, guys, you want to head over to where it says the media section and you want to delete pretty much most of these images. So this image right here is fine. This image right here is fine. But the other ones you want to get rid of. So this one right here you want to get rid of. This one right here. This one right here. There's going to be quite a lot of duplicate images that you might see. You want to get rid of the duplicates and you want to get rid of any images that just look not very appealing to the eye. You can see how these ones look really appealing and they look like they actually give you some quality information, but then the rest of them just look really, really boring. You guys can see now I'm left with three images. So the first image and the main image should just be an image showing the product in a lifestyle format with no tech, no logos, just a simple image of the product that looks really aesthetically pleasing. Then you want around about another two to four images showing the product again in a lifestyle format going over the benefits. You can see this image here actually goes over the benefits as you guys can see so you want around about three of those four of those and once you've done that guys then you can move on next section is options now we're going to come back to this section in a minute because it depends on the variants that you have so if we look at these variants depending on your product it might give you loads and loads of variants now the only variant that I want is the 15,000 milliamp with the brush set. This is the only one I want. So I'm gonna get rid of this one, I'm gonna get rid of this one, I'm gonna get rid of this one, and I'm also gonna get rid of this one. And how you do that is by selecting them, more actions, and then you're gonna be able to see where it says delete variants. And then once you've done that, you wanna go back to where it says options, color. Now mine doesn't actually have a color, so I can delete this. Now if yours does have a color, you wanna change this to the right colors. So I'm gonna click edit and I'm gonna click delete. And again, the reason why I'm deleting it is because mine doesn't have any colors. It's just one section product, meaning that there's only one option for the product. And once you've done that, you wanna scroll all the way down to where it says search engine listing and click edit, because it's gonna give you a really long UR handle for the product page you can see it, the ur handle is going to be really really long so you're going to want to delete some of this because it's too long so i might want to just call mine air duster so i'm going to get rid of this section and then i'm going to get rid of this section so i'm just going to keep it very simple my brand name and then air duster and then click save so once you've done all of that, guys, some of you are going to want to open up another tab with the Shopify again, go to settings, and then go to store details and change where it says store currency to USD because USD is the main currency in e-commerce. So once you've done that, guys, scroll back down and it should show you your pricing and it should now show it in USD. It should show you the basic price and the compared price. So the basic price, you wanna make sure you're making around about $20 on top of the product, including shipping 
and the product cost. So if I'm buying this for let's say $30, I might wanna charge $79.99. And the comparison price, I might wanna change this to $99.99, meaning that that's how much it used to cost, but I'm now selling it at this price, internally saying that I'm giving away a little bit of a discount to impulse people to buy the product. So guys, once you've done that, just double check that this is correct, the title's correct, the description's correct, the photos, the pricing, the inventory, is it a physical product? the SEO long URL make sure everything is correct guys now I want to make this very very clear before people start saying it you might have to make the same changes in auto DS now there is a glitch with auto DS um, I don't know why it happens but sometimes it can override the Shopify listing so if you don't change what it is in auto DS then after a few days it might make it go back to its normal Variant. So whatever this used to be before you edited it, it might do that in a few days. So just make sure you change the Auto DS version and the Shopify version to stop any overlapping from happening. That way you don't need to worry about that issue. So how you do that is you go into the Auto DS app, go to your products, click edit product and just change it the same way you've changed it in here. As you guys can see, now it's showing me the real name of the product. It's also giving me the right quantity, the right options. And the first thing that you wanna do once you come back in here is click where it says your name of the brand and delete it. You don't need that. The next thing that I like to do is I like to delete where it says the share button here. Where it says share, I do delete this. Some people keep it, but I personally delete it. Now, if you change it to the mobile version, guys, because this is important, most of your traffic is gonna come on the mobile version. I actually like to have the thumbnail showing. So where it says mobile layout here, you wanna change it from hide to show. Now, if you click show, it's gonna show you the images here. That way people know that images actually exist. So I have those turned on. And once you've done that, hit save. Now, once you've done that section, scroll down and it's gonna bring you to the drop down menu of your product page. Now, this is really powerful. And these are quite new with Shopify free themes, giving you the option for drop down menus with really easy editing options. And that's why I love this theme so much. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna first start off by changing the heading. So where it says heading, you wanna change it to say to learn everything about then your product name. So as you guys can see, I've changed mine to say to learn everything about the air dust, read below, or you can do something like click the drop down menu below, however you want to word it. Then once you've done that, you then want to click on each one of these highlights and it'll let you change them. Now the first one is highlights. Now I actually keep this one as it is in terms of the heading and the icon. The only thing that I do change is the actual info in the row content. Now what I put in the row content is actually the same thing that I put in the product description so this here i'm just going to copy it and paste it now you don't have to do this but i personally do this myself and i find that it works completely fine now the next thing that i do is i click where it says sent and i'm going to change this now to say in specifications so after you type in specifications you want to change the icon to a clipboard so you want to go through these and you want to try and find where it says clipboard so i've just changed mine to a clipboard and you can see the icon is changed to a clipboard and it's really important that you have the specifications on the drop down and this row content should be the the biggest row content out of every single one of them because this is where you're going to add absolutely everything about the product so i mean literally everything so it could be a really really long paragraph but that's fine because it's in a drop down menu meaning that unless people click it they won't see it so don't worry about it taking up the whole of your product page because unless they click it they won't see it but if they do click it at least they can read all of that information so how i like to do this is i like to go back to the trusty amazon and i try and find an amazon seller that has all the information about the product so i could technically put all of this in that section specifications. Now, what I would change is I'd get rid of the emoji. I'd also get rid of the sections where he's talking about the name of the product that he's called it and then keep the rest. But you need to make sure you check what's written in these before you just copy and paste it. So I've just changed mine, guys, and I've just used the strategy that I've just told you about, which is the Amazon strategy. I've just changed a few details in here so it actually reads correctly and there's the right space and the emojis are gone. And you can see here, now it's gonna give them everything they need to know about the product. So there's gonna ask no questions about it. Now, the next drop down menu is going to be what is included in terms of what's in the box. Now, once you've changed it to say what is included, you then wanna change the icon to a box, which is that one right there. 
Now, in terms of what you should put in the what is included row content section, if you head back over to AliExpress, we'll actually give it you in the description what's included and just copy and paste it. So you can see here, I've just added these three things, which is more than enough for people to understand what is included. Now for the next one, you're going to need to call it our warranty or our refund policy. Now, if it's an electronical product like mine, you're going to want a warranty policy because it's electronic and you should be given out at least one year for free in terms of that's gonna be your manufacturer warranty. So in this one, I'm gonna put literally, we offer one year of warranty. Now, if it's a refund policy because it's not electronic, then you need to mention that you offer 14 days or 30 days, but if the product's not been used or the product breaks. So once you guys have done that, make sure you save it. Now, let's say, for example, you want to add another three rows or three drop down menus. Go to where it says collapsible content and you can click add collapsible row. And that means you can just add more to it. But I think that's more than enough for me personally, but it just depends on what you're selling. So if we head over to the next section, this is going to be the review section for your website. Now, this really depends. Now, I would say I would keep this section if your product does not have any reviews. So if you head over to AliExpress and have a look if your product has reviews, if you've got enough reviews with images on AliExpress, then I would get rid of it. But if your product doesn't have any reviews, then I would personally keep it. But because my product has got enough reviews on AliExpress with images, I'm going to delete it. Then it says here, introduce other complimentary products. Now you're gonna to wanna to keep this section if you're gonna turn this into a niche store or you're gonna to wanna to add some upsells. But for now, I'm going to delete it. Now the next section is the image with text section. And this part is kind of annoying because you can't just import it from the homepage. So basically what you're going to do on these ones is the same as what you did on the homepage, but you just have to re-add it in. So the best way of doing this is just copy and paste in it again, and it shouldn't take you too long, but that's literally all you need to do. So once you guys have done that, now. I've not fully filled these out because I want to save a bit of time, but you get the idea. You're just going to copy what's on the home page. Now, what you do need to change though is the shop now button because basically you're not going to need to have it because you're there already on the product page. It's just going to take them back to the product page. So I would personally delete these. So guys, once you've done that, you should have your row by row images and text just without the shop now button because again, they're on the product page. So you don't need it. Now, once you've done that, you're going to go back to where it says subscribe to our emails and you're going to do the exact same thing as you did on the homepage, change it to white and change the subheading to being deleted and change it from subscribe to our emails to sign up to get 10% off your first order. As you guys can see, I've just done mine to make sure it matches what it is on the homepage. Now, once you've done that, guys, scroll all the way back up and you're going to want to add a video just here. So where it says add section, just click it and it will give you the option to add a video. So you guys can see here, it's giving me the options, click show more, and then I'm gonna choose video, which is the very bottom one. So you can see here, video, and again, you're going to want to do the exact same thing as on the homepage, get rid of the heading, you're also gonna to wanna to change the color from background one to accent two. Now, once you've done all of that, guys, make sure you change it back to the mobile version and just have a quick look to see what this currently looks like on the mobile version. And in my opinion, it's starting to look really, really nice on the mobile version as well as the desktop version. So once you guys are up to the product page section that I'm on, if you're not, just take a few minutes back and carry on. Then we wanna then create our logo. So you wanna head back over to Canva, search for logo in the search bar and you can see i've actually changed mine to modern so i'm going for a modern style and you just want to pick something that you quite like the look of in my opinion i quite like the look of this one the first thing that i'm going to want to do is change the background color to white because i want it on a white background and then i'm going to also change the text to black because i'm going to want it in black text by clicking the color black same with this one color black and then I'm gonna get rid of this icon because I don't want it, but I do like the way they've done the text here. So I'm gonna drag it slightly up here. And then what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to wanna to call it the name of my product. So I'm gonna call it Air Dust. So Air Dust. But I'm gonna put a little space in the middle because I'm actually gonna put an icon in the middle, which I quite like to do. I quite like to use this strategy. Now, if you don't know how to come up with a brand name, you can use brand name generators. And I'll leave a link in the description where you literally put the name of your product and then it comes up with generations of names you could call it. But I just like to think smart and think what's the purpose of my product and then just name it that. So the purpose of my product is to clean dust. So I've called it air dust. So then I've just called it air dust. And then the bottom section, I'm gonna call it make cleaning easy. So just to explain what this actually does. 
So as you guys can see, this is where I am right now. Air dust with a space in the middle because I'm going to put a symbol. Make cleaning easy, but I'm going to make this slightly smaller because I actually want this smaller than the main text. So I'm going to make this big. You want to try and fit it to fill the whole of the blank canvas. You can see the blank canvas. You want to try and fill as much as you can, and then you're going to want to make this slightly bigger again, but not as big as the text. And then I'm going to put it there. So that's how it's looking right now. Then I'm going to go to elements. I'm going to type in air because that's what my logo should look like air as in like an air duster and then i'm going to try and find something that symbolizes mine so i quite like that symbol so i'm going to put that in the middle of the air and the dust i'm going to put the position as backwards and forwards so you can see here position backwards that way i can just edit this really easily and i'm also going to rotate this slightly like that and i'm going to make it slightly bigger in like that that's roughly how i want my logo to look now obviously you guys have got lots more time than i have to make this look really really nice now i'm going to change the color of this to be my logo color so i'm going to go back to colors color picker my color which is this one right here i'm going to copy the color code and i'm going to try and change my logo symbol to match my logo color and my actual website color so i'm going to go back here type in the logo color type it in there type it in there and I'm gonna make the outskirts more of a white or slightly a brighter color, so maybe like that. You guys can see this is roughly how my logo is going to look. Air dust with the little air icon and then make cleaning easy. Now again, you can make yours look so much nicer than mine. Canva give you really good templates to use, but this is roughly how I'm gonna make mine look. So I've got the little symbol with the purple color to match my website. So. The best way to make this work if you want to make your logo really big on your website is not to actually download it, it's to actually print screen it. So I'm going to print screen this as small to the icon as possible. So from here to here, you can see there's barely any white outside of what I've just highlighted. Now the reason why you want to do it like that is because I find that if you download it, it just makes it really small. So by doing that, you're going to go back to your Shopify, you're going to go back to header, you're going to go to where it says default logo, change, select image, and then you're going to select the image you just made. So I'm going to click select. And you can see here, as long as your custom logo width is the biggest version, you can see that looks really nice and big now. So that adds a lot more character to the website. If you also take a look at it on the mobile version, it also looks really, really nice on the mobile version. And again, the logo looks nice and big. And if you do it the download way, it will not make it nice and big. It will make it small so it doesn't look attractive on the desktop and the mobile. Now the next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go back to Canva and you're gonna to wanna to change the background of the logo. So as I showed you before, it was on a white background, change it to the color of your accent. Now my accent color is this purple. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to change the color of your text from black to white, so you're inverting it. And then you wanna to go to where it says the footer, where it's got this little logo icon, change it to your logo just in the purple color, matching the accent color. So you can see here, I'm gonna make it big. So it looks really nice on the mobile version the desktop version you can see this is the logo it's in black and it's on a white background this time it's in white on a purple background so that way i can add it to my footer and if we take a look at it on the mobile as well you can see it looks really nice as well on the mobile version the next thing that you guys want to do is you want to make the video for your website so what you need to do is you need to download the video from your supplier and you want to make sure you ask the supplier that it is their actual video and you can use it now once you've downloaded that video using ali save you want to head over to in video there'll be a link in the description so you can get a really cheap discount on in video it's the best video editing software for drop shipping in my opinion for budget and for beginner friendly now, once you've created a account within video, you want to go to the dashboard and then you want to go to where it says editor. You want to click the icon here, this little icon, and you want to go to landscape. So the first thing you want to do when you're inside of the editor is go to where it says uploads, upload media, and you want to upload the video you got from AliExpress. Now, once the video is fully uploaded, you want to drag it over to the workspace. Now, once you drag it over to the workspace, it will then give you the crop and edit version. You don't need to worry about this. You just want to click add. So once you've added the footage in the first thing we're going to want to do is add our logo on top, but we're not going to add it where it says logo. We're going to add it on top of the old logo on the footage to cover it up. So you want to go to where it says their logo and you're going to want to click delete because you don't want it on there. Now, you want to cover it up with your logo because you don't want this logo on there. Now, you should be only doing this if you've got permission to do so. So if the video has come from your supplier and they've said that this is their video, then you should be able to cover the logo up. But if this is somebody else's footage, you should not be doing this. So if this is somebody else's footage, then you will have to go and get other footage via you getting the product to your house and recording it 
or you asking your supplier if they can make footage for you. You shouldn't be ripping people off and uploading your logo on top. You should only be doing this if you have permission to do so. So once you've added the logo, I've just clicked the plus icon and you can see it's added the image into the frame. You're gonna to wanna to resize it just so it's big enough to cover that old logo, which it now is. And once you've done that, go to the bottom section where you can see the video footage over the top of each other and make sure that the image overlays the full footage. So you can see there, now it's overlaid the full footage so you can see that it's covering it up over the whole video itself. Now, the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click the actual video footage itself. So the actual video itself, click that instead of the image. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to where it says volume and you're going to want to mute the volume. So basically by doing that, the volume in the previous video, so they've got their own music, you're gonna add your own music instead. You don't wanna use their music, you wanna use your own music. So once you head over to music, you're gonna see genre mood. Now I sort it by genre and I like to use pop music because I find that pop music works the best. And then you wanna listen to all of these different musics and see which one you like the most and just select it. So let's say I like this one, I'm just gonna click the plus icon and you're gonna see that it's gonna add it into the frame. So you're going to see now it's added it in the frame and it's actually added it so it fits the full footage. Now, once you've done that, play the video and see if it works. As long as everything works, the logo on top of the old logo, the old volume not working, and then your music working, as soon as you've done that, you want to hit the export button. So once you've exported the video, you want to then create a YouTube channel by heading over to YouTube, creating a new Google account, and then creating a channel. And then you want to upload that video and you want to upload it as an unlisted video. And once you've done that, it should give you the link and you want to put the link here where it says URL. And as I've just done mine, you're gonna now see that it's added my video. So if I click video, you're gonna see my video is gonna play. You can also see here the video, air dust video, and you can see the video right here, which is really, really nice. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a thumbnail for the video. You don't want it just to just look like this because it looks unprofessional. So we're actually gonna create a thumbnail now to add over this so they can actually click it and then watch the video. Now, if you head back over to Canva and type in YouTube thumbnail and then sort it by tutorial, these are gonna be the thumbnails that you're going to need to help you create a thumbnail that looks really, really nice for your product. So for example, if I'm using a kitchen product for my website, I might wanna use this one, add my kitchen product, and then change the name. So after going through some of these thumbnails, I found one that I like, so I'm gonna use this one by clicking it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it from where it says live now to watch now because people can watch the video now. And where it says midnight gaming, I'm gonna change it to air dust cleaner demo video. So I'm gonna change this one to air dust. So where it says live streaming, I'm gonna change it to where it says demo video like that. And I quite like the way that looks. And then where it shows this icon, I'm actually gonna delete it because it's the wrong icon. It should be my product. So I'm gonna click delete. I'm gonna go back to uploads. I'm gonna upload the product with the iPhone again, and I'm just gonna remove the background. So you can see I've just uploaded the product with the iPhone, but this time I'm gonna click edit, and I'm gonna actually remove the background again and just keep the iPhone and the actual air dust tool and just put a shadow on it. So I'm gonna click background remover. And you guys can see this is how the image looks now, but I do need to make a few adjustments because it's still showing this section. So I'm gonna delete this slowly. And you want to try and get it as clean as possible as it's not on a white background. So this will show. Now, once you've done that, hit done. Now, mine's not perfect. You can see there's a bit of white here, but you guys have got more time than me. So make sure you make it look good and then click apply. And then I'm actually going to add a shadow to this to make it pop. So you want to hit shadows and then you want to hit glow or drop. Now, I'm going to use drop. And you're going to see that's going to add a slight shadow just to uplift it from the image. You can see here it's added a nice shadow to give it a bit of a 3D effect. And I'm going to make this image slightly bigger so I can add it like this. And that looks good to me. So I'm going to hit download. Now, once you've created that image in Canva, go back to the video section, go to cover image and upload it here. And you should now see it looking like this, which looks a lot better than the default thumbnail off the video. So you can see on mobile, that looks a lot cleaner and a lot more professional than it did before. Now, now, what you want to make sure you do next is go back to the home page, go to the video on the home page, add the link, add the thumbnail, and then you can click save. So the next thing that I need you guys to do is download an app called Luke's Reviews. Make sure you use my link in the description so you can get 30 days for free. Once you've downloaded it, go for the beginner plan, which is like the $14.99 or the nine, I think it's the $9.99 plan, which is $9. And then once you've set it up, go to import reviews, 
drag this little button into your little bookmarks then go to your aliexpress listing which is right here click import to luke's and then it will give you the option to select the product select your product and then you want to go to where it says ratings four stars it up reviews all countries and then you want to go with only with photos only reviews of photos click preview and import so make sure when it shows you the photo reviews with the text you read them to see if they actually are good reviews because if they're not then it's just pointless putting them on so i'm going to reject this one because i don't like it this one says arrived in 14 days not tax excellent seller recommend to everyone click import this one says a great thing import this one says exactly like the ad while well packaged second level power is very good i'm going to import that one and then this one says just a beast import so you want to make sure you read all of these guys because it's extremely important now once you've imported all these reviews i'm just going to import a few more i'm not going to read them guys just for the sake of the time so i'm going to import all those and i'm going to click finish importing you want to run about three to five of them on your website so once you guys have imported three to five photo reviews you can do more if you want as long as they're good quality go back into luke's go to settings go to display reviews go to review widgets and go to where it says list compact because i believe Believe that one looks the best and once you've done that guys go back to settings go to where it says branding and then where it goes general appearance you want to change the star color to a gold color by clicking ffd 500 and that will give you the gold color once you guys have done that go back to your shopify store editor so guys once you've refreshed the page for your product page it should now add the star logos meaning that luke's has been imported successfully now i would recommend that you drag the stars above the name of the product so you can see where it's a star rating i would drag that above the title so now it should have it right at the top which you should see in a minute yep you got the reviews at the top and then the name of the product that looks more professional and that looks better to me once you guys have done that scroll to the bottom of the product page go to where it says add section and then it should show apps and then you want to go to where it says the luke's ones and you want to go to where it says review widgets review widgets click that and then it should add it right here. Now, where it shows your review widgets, you do want to drag it above the email signups. So you should have it under the features right here. So once you've done that, it should look like this, and then you can click save. Now, once you've done that, guys, scroll down on the mobile version to see how it looks. It should look just like mine, and looks really, really nice, and that will help with the conversion rates. Now, the last thing that I need you guys to do is go back to the Shopify main dashboard on a new tab and go to online store and then go to pages. Now, once you're inside pages, pages you should already have one called contact i would change it to say contact us instead it sounds a little bit better and then click save and then you're going to want to create a few more pages and the pages that you're going to want to create is a refund policy a terms of service a shipping and delivery and then a tracking page so in terms of each one of these pages like return policy terms of service there'll be a link in the description once we hit 2000 likes with the templates that you can just copy and paste into the content section all you need to do is write in refund policy and return policy each one for each page so once you guys have done all of those pages you can move on now i've only done two just to save some time but you should have all of them in total terms of service shipping and delivery refund policy privacy policy contact us those should all be done then you want to head over to the navigation page which is right here and you want to go to where it says main menu and this is really important and you want to delete everything inside of this one delete 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 and the first menu that you're going to use is going to be called shop then your product name so shop air dust now so that's what i'm going to call it and then you're going to put a link to your product page so this is going to be in the main menu so people can shop it really quickly then you're going to add one and you're going to call this track your order and then you're going to go on google and type in parcel tracker and once you type in parcel tracker you should see one called parcelapp.com copy this go back in here paste the link select the link and then you can click add and the last one that you're going to have in the main menu is going to be contact us so go to link go to pages and then select contact us and it will automatically fill it for you and then you're going to click save menu now in the footer menu you're going to want to add all of the ones that you've just had you're going to want to delete search and add terms of service privacy policy track your order all of those should be added inside of here now once you've done that and you've updated your shopify editor you should see now when you go to the menu bar it shows shop air dust now track your order contact us it should show those options now in terms of the footer how you do the footer is you scroll down select the footer and then you can click 
choose menu so you can actually change the menu and you want to change it to the one you've just created which is footer menu once you select that it should import all of the ones that you've just created now in terms of finishing off the footer i like to delete where it says our mission so i delete that section because i don't like it and i just keep the about and the shop so under the about i actually delete that as well and what i actually add in this section is just text so add text and then in this text, I'm actually going to add it above the logo. So it's side by side. And I'm going to want to change this one to contact us. And then you're going to have here email us at and then your email address info at your brand name. And then where it says shop, you're going to want to change this one to our links. And then that should have your menu links like terms of service privacy policy and then that should have your email now once you've done that you can click save so guys the last thing that we need to do is go to theme settings go to checkout and you want to edit your checkout page so if you go to checkout go to logo select your logo which is this one right here click select scroll down to where it says accent colors and said lose the accent colors that you've just used which is the purple and then click save so guys, that's pretty much it when it comes to building this one product store theme template that I've just given you. Now you can do a few more things in here. So if you go to theme settings, you can change a few of these in here, but it's just down to your own behavior and what you want to do. But this is pretty much the main layout of how you want it to look. Again, you can implement a few more things, but this should be the minimum of what you do to make your store look professional. So guys, that was it on how to build a one product dropshipping store the same way I'm building them for my six figure and seven figure brands i hope that tutorial was helpful make sure we get 2,000 likes in this video so you can get those templates for your pages let me know what you thought of this tutorial i'll catch you guys on the next one peace out